R3.0 has brought along a wide number of new and exciting abilities for people to play around with. But thanks to it, we have seen ARC subclasses become more and more common than they were before, with a few pros and cons changes towards them. Today, I want to cover the flux grenades, as that's not something you see every day, but with things like Jolt being active, once we get a kill, I can easily see this one grenade being crazy good against single targets. Think of champions and bosses. Not only that, but adding in Variety's Realm to the mix will amplify his damage even more so, so hopefully this should give you an idea as to how good of a grenade it is compared to Storm and Pulse grenades instead, but only for Warlocks remember. Now if you like obscenely powerful builds or enjoy creative content, then you've come to the right channel, so I would really appreciate a like, a sub, a share, and for you turning on your notifications as it goes a long way for me. So start with the grenade of choice, Flux Grenades are a single target sticky grenade that has built in fastball and can do one big burst damage within a single explosion. Compared to all the other grenades, this grenade has the highest base cooldown out of everything we have seen at around 3 minutes. Because of this cooldown, not a lot of people will use this when compared to pulse grenades that can easily lock down areas and do continuous damage without much effort involved. Now to make this build work, we need to reduce the cooldown rate, find suitable mods for this, and get weapons that will work towards benefiting the setup in general. For this, I have found the following which is both suitable and practical towards our cores. For Asped, we have Arxol, we're placing a Rift down, producing Arxol. We then have Electric Static Mind, we're defeating a target with Arc abilities, or defeating a jolted and blinded target will create Ion Traces. Collecting Traces will make you Amplified. For fragments, we have Sparkle Beacons, where being amplified, your Arc Special Weapon on Final Blows create a blind explosion. Spark of Discharge, where Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create Ionic Traces. Spark of Ions, where defeating a jolted target creates Ionic Traces. And Spark of Shock, where your Arc grenades jolt targets. The key stats to focus on 70 to 18 resilience, 60 to 70 in recovery, 90 in discipline. For key mods to focus on, a Bowerful Wealth for getting 2 worlds instead of 1, from the Might for a 25% weapon elemental buff of matching type, Elemental Ordnance where using your grenades can make wells, Reaping Wellmaker where using your class ability and then getting a kill with it will produce a void elemental wells, and Elemental Light where using your super will produce an elemental well. We have just seen how powerful Variety's Brow is when on times 5 death throws for users, and with the right build in mind, you can make grenades super powerful for a very long time and for slogged out fights. This is what we aim to do with our flux grenade, as they are already strong on their own, but when amped up further, they can do some impressive damage for everyone involved. On top of that, our grenades will also jolt targets, so if the single blast doesn't kill a boss outright and his minions, then the jolt effect should finish up, but generally, the basis of the build where the aspect fragments use will aid us with getting our grenades up quickly, and this is what you should aim for. Now for weapons, we only have one main primary that I would recommend everyone to have and use, which is the Trinity Ghoul Bow. Not a great weapon to use against bosses, as its non-charged attack form does okay damage, but its main strength will lie when it becomes charged and used against minor combatants. A single kill with it will make it charged, and then your next shot will shoot arc lightning onto anyone hit by it, and allow you to repeat this again and again if the arc chain effect connects with others. This simple design allows a weapon to single-handedly clear rooms of combatants with just weapon alone, and because of how easy it is to pull off multiple kills with it, it makes this a number one contender of the best assault to have on you at all times. Combining it with arc build is a no-brainer, since arc abilities are great for add control in small to large areas of mass. Using it now with varieties and the fragments of choice, this alone will allow us to recharge the grenade back within seconds rather than minutes. This also means that you don't need to invest into having Demolitionist or Wellspring available for longer lasting sustainability. Simply, by having this weapon and varieties in tow, you should be able to make any grenade build of your dreams come true with how easy it is to use. For Heavy, we have the Swarm Adept with Surplus and Dragonfly, and it's a great Heavy to have when running a full arc build for end game, or you just need to make use of the Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger mod this season. This isn't a weapon in rotation anymore, so not a lot of people will have it anymore, but there is alternatives similar to it. The 7th Seraph Heavy Machine Gun can be gotten from Xerp every now and then when he sells it, and it's still one of the best Arc Heavy Machine Guns to have if you don't have one already. 
You can get a vault that has auto load the holster and vault pool, which makes it a very popular setup for those who want to do quick burst damage in between using weapons. Of course, heavy machine guns are down to you, but I would keep an eye out for it when you get a chance to, and pick it up. For stats, we have three key areas to focus on, which is resilience, recovery, and discipline. Although recovery and discipline are the main stats you want to invest in first. Recovery is pretty simple, as we'll be using it here and there, and you don't need a lot to invest into it. Wells, Ionic Traces, and Absolution Mod is enough to keep this one stat afloat at 60. However, if you're someone who uses Rifts a lot for endgame or in general purposes, then go ahead and bump this stat up to 70, just to be sure. For Discipline, we have Art at 90, although this can be pushed to 100 if you wish. I only stopped here since I figured with everything going on, there isn't any point of investing into 100 for a small bump in grenade reduction time. Now, if you have the same following stuff that I do, then you could end it there and finish off the rest of the build. But for those that don't have any good armor stats for discipline or key mods, then you should be balancing the rest of your stats out first before attempting anything else. A good place to start with discipline would be to aim for 50 as a general starting point, and then escalate the rest of the stats into sustainable areas that you believe are good to start with. Once that is in action, you should then focus on your discipline and see how far you can get it. You don't need 100 with the build, remember, if you have the same items that I do. But if you have a little bit of points left over to invest, then invest up to 70 just for good measure into your discipline stat. After that, make sure you have the Lightning Strikes Twice mod, as this will help in the long run. And if you don't have the Elemental Ordnance or Battle World mod and spare, then try and get the Firepower mod instead, which is a Charge Light mod that is sold by Ada every now and then. If you can't get either of these things, then try and get a primary weapon with Demolitionist or Wellspring on it as spare backup. This should be enough for you to replicate the build with a low stat discipline build on demand. Now, leftover wise, we have Machine Gun Ammo Finder for more ways to find ammo, Harmonic Cypher mod for creating auto power via matching arc elements, Machine Gun Scavenger mod for getting bonus ammo reserves, Bad Amplitude where damaging a champion with arc abilities causes them to be jolted, and Lightning Strikes twice where upon using your arc grenade, it regens faster. Now here's a list breaking it all down into one. Go ahead and pause the video so you can take notes. For head, we have discipline, homework, siphon, machine gun, ammo finder, and battle for mod. Arm, we have recovery in front of might mod. Chest, we have discipline, thermal shot plating, concussive dampener, and elemental owners mod. Leg, we have resilience, machine gun scavenger, absolution, and reaper well maker mod. Bond, we have mind resilience, lightning strikes twice. Bad Amplitude and Elemental Light Mods. The Flux Grenades have always been a hit or miss in game because of their limited use, and thanks to PvP, they are substantially received a hefty nerf to their regen charge time. Compared to all the other grenades in game, this is the only grenade that has such a high ridiculous base cooldown to which is quite outrageous to have, but not without its warrants. You see, Arc Sticky Grenades are very powerful single target grenades, and when compared to solo and void stickies, arcs do a huge burst damage in one single blow. Although, when you build into them right, solar and void can out damage flux grenade easily with their relatively cooldown rates. But the following build and arc update has allowed them to make a return with positive effects. Now, utilizing variety's brow of the effect, we can both increase the damage of a single grenade and also gain grenade energy as we go along, and at times 5 death throws, our grenades can reach around 100k plus on a single target. This alongside the jolt effect means a single grenade can do a ton of damage on a boss and then take out additional adds near them for even more damage built up. But the one great thing about this build is how we can circumvent the high cooldown rate of the grenade to fall much faster than before. We have a high grenade stat, elemental wells, our traces and lightning strikes twice all benefit in the build to improve our current situation. Most importantly, we are using the Trinity Ghoul with the build to easily bump up multi kills easily, which will easily allow us to spam grenades and get a times 5 grenade buff in seconds. You can of course use a Volt Shot weapon as well, as it does the same thing after a kill, but I find that Trinity Ghoul is easier to proc, and bows in general have the range and damage to back up its arc effect. Simply, the build is fantastic for all modes of content in game, and can be used in PvP as well, although weapon-wise, you will need to tinker around with it. 
It's worth the investment, as Flux grenades are pretty powerful on their own, I can potentially one shot champions, ultras, mages, all take a huge bite out of bosses as shown. Both pulses and storm grenades are still favoured for a lot of players because they are easy of use, but if you ever get the time to, I would recommend you learn how to use flux grenades properly as they can be, like I said, hit or miss. Once you master them, you can easily incorporate flux grenades into your build over time and then you'll be able to use this build to its fullest. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and a share, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content and banter every now and then. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all next one.